You know, just as I started this video, I kid you not, it started raining. And I'm reminded of the gloomy days that may come for many of us. And it's a sobering reminder because what I'm going to say is going to be argued by many, but it's biblically based. And a lot of us are talking right now about exclusivity, chosen people. People are talking about how we're separating the wheat from the chaff, that some people are not gonna make it to heaven and all these different conversations. It's a very hot topic because it's dividing people. But you have to realize that Jesus, this is what he preached. This is what he talked about when he talked about the parable of the wedding feast, right? For example, in Matthew 22. And I'm gonna just read a little bit of this, but I'm saying this because ultimately at the end of it, right? This is not to say hey, we don't want you in the body of Christ. We don't want you to come into the kingdom of God. The gospel is not for you. It is. And you, the invitation is there. But the question here is that, are you willing to go deeper? Are you willing to really step up? And even if you are a dedicated Christian, let's say you are faithful or whatnot, God, he really wants to refine, to sanctify, to hone people in and to uh, leverage what you have to offer for the kingdom. And this is not a works-based salvation. I'm talking about how God is looking for people that want to be obedient. Doing the will of my Father, doing the will of God requires a sacrifice, requires obedience, and it requires you to lay down your life fully. It's not just this one foot in, one foot out. Many of us don't realize what the parable of the wedding feast, feast is really saying in Matthew 22. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. They were not willing to come. And again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calf are killed and all things are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways and as many as you can find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king sent to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. So take note here. He says that they were not found worthy. There were many that were invited, but they were not found worthy. You could be a Christian and you are not found worthy in the eyes of God. You have to realize that a lot of us take the grace of God for granted. We abuse it. We think that we shouldn't be doing whatever, but you have to literally work out yourself. You have to pick up your cross, take up your cross. You have to be able to, to fight sin and you have to desire to do the will of, his, uh, of the Father. You can't just hope that you're going to get in there just by doing whatever you want and then just by the skin of your teeth be able to say that, oh, I'm invited to this wedding and when you didn't have a wedding garment. There's a lot you could talk about in this passage, but I want to talk about that many are called, but few are chosen. Many of you guys are called. Many of you guys have been given a wedding invitation, but you chose not to take it. For some of them, you, you went as far as ridiculing, mocking, certain servants of God, certain people, certain messages. God was speaking to you in certain ways. He was trying to tackle your character. He was trying to, uh, to coach you, to, to disciple you, to change you, to mold you. But yet you said no to these things. And many of you, atheists, if I want to call out many others, you have been invited, but you decided not to come. And for others, you think you're invited. You, you're coming in there without a wedding garment. You think you, you, hey, I'm here, I belong here. But it says that you will be bound, hand and foot, taken away, cast into the utter darkness where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You do not want to be in a place for which you are weeping and gnashing at the end of all of this. 
and for all of many of us, you could be going around doing your own thing. Yeah, you may be saved in some sense, but you're not really doing kingdom work because you're going around in circles doing what you presume to be the will of God. You don't want to lay down your life. You don't want to live that sanctified, set apart life. And many people think they're chosen, but they're not, right? And for others to be chosen, to be a chosen one, that's, that's a topic that a lot of us are talking about. And this is the distinction that God is trying to show that there truly are people that are doing wonder, awe and wonder. They're doing actual ministry. They're bearing fruit a hundredfold. You're seeing people come to know the Lord. You're seeing people go deeper in Him. And they're literally getting what God wants them to have because they have been chosen to do the kingdom work of God in this hour. And so that's why you're seeing people, guys, that look like they're misfits in the highways, on the streets. They look like they're whatever, but they have been invited and they have been found worthy. So you have to study this, right? This is not just some cookie cutter, force fit, everybody just kind of one size, one size fits all type of Christianity. There's more to it than what you believe. And God is trying to tear down these walls, cultural walls, denominational walls. He's trying to, to, to take down pride if you're willing. But people, like it says here, they're burning up their cities, destroying the armies, um, the murderers, all these people are doing wicked things in the eyes of God. And it's literally as clear as day when God is talking about, when Christ is preaching about this, in the parable of the wedding feast. And so I say this in some solemn way, in a sad sort of uh, way, sad light, but at the same time, as a, uh, a tough reminder, a, a time for which when God is really distinguishing the wheat from the chaff, that the invitation is still there, right? But w are you willing to, to be chosen? Are you willing to want to take up your cross to do the will of my Father? to lay down your life in total surrenderance and say, Lord, have your way because I want to do what pleases you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. A lot of us think that in, in terms of sacrifice, well, we, we just, you know, sacrifice however much we want and what we think is good. We, we want to give all this offering, all this money. Well, I have all this stuff. Let me just give it to you. But you're not obedient to the will, to the call, to the word of God as God has been calling us to do. So I'm saying this guys with a heavy heart in some sense, but also with encouragement because many of us have been motivated. And I know a lot of you guys watching this, you're seeing me, many other brothers and sisters really doing something more for the kingdom than a Sunday school mentality. We're doing more than just every once in a while, a retreat once a year type of thing. You're taking your walk seriously and you're seeing it with other brothers and sisters stepping up and saying, man, I want to accept this call and I want to lay down my life for him. So God bless you guys. God is going to use that. He's going to open doors for you. There's going to be breakthrough and you will see the glory of God come in this place, in your life, in the world around us. So love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon. Very soon.